All right, guys, negative exponents. So that is making a big deal out of the fact that now we have a negative sign. All right? So this negative is not subtraction. All right? That is not what this negative sign means. Because it's in an exponent, this is a little piece of notation that causes us to do something a little different with the variable. So the rule is, uh, let's say this was over 1 because it's a fraction-y thing. If I have a to the negative exponent, this negative here tells me I need to put the a and b on the other side of the fraction line. So if I have a to the negative b, that equals a to the 1 over a to the positive b. All right, so if I have an a to the negative b on top, that's the same as a to the positive b on the bottom. That also gives us the rule, if I had 1 over a to the negative b on the bottom, this negative tells us this thing's got to go up, and when it goes up to the other side of the fraction line, this line here, it loses its negative sign. So that would equal plain old a to the b. All right, so that's two versions of the same rule. Notice I didn't say flip it because it only moves the variable that has the negative exponent. So why is that rule? All right, let's do a quick little explanation, our quasi-explanation of why that rule really works. Well, let's say I took this a to the fourth and I multiplied it by 1 over a, right? So that would be like this. Multiply this times 1 over a, and I have a to the fourth over a, which is really a over 1. All right, well, that's a. Um, when I divide this by a, this should equal a to the 4 minus 1, which is a to the third. Okay, well, if I divide this by a, then I have to subtract 1 from the exponent, and I get this. If I divide that by a, now there's no equal signs here. I'm not saying these are equal. They're not. If I divide this by a, a squared over a to the 1 is a to the 2 minus 1 is 1. All right, so now what if I do this, this last time? Well, when I divided this by that, a to the 2 over a to the 1, that was a to the 2 minus 1 gave me a to the 1. Therefore, if I continue the pattern, if I were to divide this by a, that gives me a to the 1 minus 1. All right, so that actually gives me another rule. What's 1 minus 1? That's 0. So continuing the pattern backwards, if I had a to the 0, well, what the heck does that equal? Well, since this is a continuation of this pattern backwards, and this, a over a to the 1 over a to the 1, should equal a to the 0. And we know that this equals, let me move this over here. So we know a over a to the 1 is equal to a to the 0 because we have to subtract the exponents. And we know that this is equal to 1. That tells me that we have another rule. 1 is equal to a to the 0. So anything to the 0, that's a third rule part of this slideshow, anything to the 0th power equals 1. Because otherwise, our mathematics would not be consistent when we do this little kind of pattern. There are other proofs as well, but that should suffice for now. So continuing the pattern backwards, we have a to the 0. And if I were to divide that again by a, well, we said a to the 0 was really 1. Well, that would have to be, or let's see if it is a to the 0. Well, that's going to be 0 minus 1. So this is going to have to be a to the negative 1. a to the 0 over a to the 1 is a to the negative 1, because it's 0 minus 1. That was our quotient rule. Well, I know that this is equal to 
a to the 0 is 1, so this is 1 over a. So that means that a to the 1, a to the negative 1, has to equal 1 over a. So that gives us our rule. And then that's what allows us to uh, work. Like This is what continues that pattern and keeps the mathematics consistent. So let's give you a couple more examples. This is your U try, but I feel like maybe you could use another example. Uh, you should know the answer to that one based on previous slides. So if I have uh, 5xy all to the 0, well, that 0 would get distributed. And really, you think of it as anything to the 0th power is going to equal 1. And the reason this equals 1 is you get 5 to the 0, x to the 0, y to the 0, which is 1 times 1 times 1, which equals 1. All right, now if I had that same thing, if I had 5xy to the 0, this 0 exponent only goes with the y variable. The base is y, the power is 0. So the 0, 1 rule only gets applied to the y. So this would be 5x times this equals 1, which would just be 5x. Okay, so those couple extra examples should help you with this stuff. Now, we're going to do a few more examples here. So recall these rules, and then I'm going to hammer through uh, several examples so that you see all the different sort of weird little variations that can occur. So the power rule was anything to uh, parenthetical phrase to uh, exponent is going to be x to the n, y to the n. You distribute the exponent. Here you distribute the exponent, get x to the n, y to the n. Here, this is a power of a power rule, so it's x to the n times m. And anything with a negative exponent is going to be that on the bottom with the exponent positive. Now, since it moved down, and there's nothing else, to, you have to still keep the top. The top, we put a 1 up there. All right, here we go. Uh, here we're going to distribute the 4. And then we get, actually, I think it's easier to simplify in the parentheses first. No, nope, never mind. Distribute the 4. This inside is simplified. So we get xy times 2 to the 4th times x to the power of a power rule 2 times 4 over um, y squared to the fourth, so y to the eighth, because that's 2 times 4. So that gives us, um, if this had to be a fraction, it'd be over 1. So I'd multiply this. So this is all being multiplied. So I can think of this as one large fraction, with this being on the top. So that gives me x times x to the eighth is x to the ninth y, that's the only y up there, 2 to the 4th, we got to compute the number, so that's going to be a 16, and then that's over y to the 8th. Now, we get into one more little tricky kind of thing, after we do one more step. This gives us y to the 1 over y to the 8th, there's a 16, x to the 9th, y to the 1 minus 8 is negative 7. Now the other rule is no negative, why did I start there? No negative exponents. Alright, you cannot have negative exponents. That's the rule. So if there is a negative exponent like this, it needs to get moved to the other side of the fraction line. So in this case, down. So if this had to look like a fraction, it would look like that. And because this is the one with the negative exponent, this is going to go down, and then the exponent will be positive. Only the variable to which the exponent applies. So that's going to be 16, x to the ninth, y to the seventh on the bottom, positive 7. End of story. Why? Sorry, that's my little writing tablet thing. So now let's look at this. Let's do our this rule. He where is it? That's the product rule. 
So x to the n over times x to the m is x to the n plus m. That's our uh, product rule. So it's going to be 5 plus um, negative 12 plus 0. So this is going to give us x to the negative 7. No negative exponents. So if that had to be a fraction, it would be like this. And it's going to give us 1 over x to the 7th final answer. All right, I'm not going to be as explaining on these next examples. I'm just going to kind of hammer through them so you can see how this works. So negative exponent, negative exponent, those both have to go down. And by down, I mean I'm referring to this imaginary fraction line. So if I had to have a fraction, it would look like this. So that would be P stays on top. Q squared goes down. Now that 2 is a positive. R uh, cubed goes down, and now that cubed is positive. End of story. Here we distribute the exponent, so I have 4 to the negative 4 over 3 to the negative 4. Because this exponent is negative, that has to go to the top, and because this exponent is negative, that has to go to the bottom. So that goes up and gives me x. Why do I do that? That gives me. 3 to the positive 4 on top, and 4 to the positive 4 on the bottom, and then we compute those numbers. 3 to the 4th is 81, and 4 to the 4th is 16, 64 times 4 is 256. Boom. Do enough of these and you'll memorize some of those numbers. Alright, so we have a fraction tree like any other fraction, 22 over 11 just reduces to 2 over 1. So we have a 2 on the top, 1 on the bottom. r cubed over r squared is r to the 3 minus 2, which is 1. s squared over s cubed is s to the 2 minus minus 3. So that's really going to be a plus 3. Since we just have a 1 on the bottom of this fraction line, when I write my final answer, I don't need to make it look like a fraction because it's just over 1. So 2, R, we don't write the R to the 1s if we're trying to make it look like we know what we're really doing here. And then S to the 2 plus 3 is 5. All right, here we go. Distribute this to everything here, even the number. So I get 2 to the exponent of 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Power of a power rule, this is negative 2 times negative 3. So it's going to be a to the negative times negative is positive 6, because it's 2 times 3. And then b to the negative 3 over 5a squared b to the 4th. These two lucky guys have negative exponents, so they move. They're the only ones that move. So that leaves your a to the 6th on top. Um, I have a 2 to the 3rd on the bottom times the 5. Uh, the a squared is still on the bottom. Oh, I could have taken care of that. Shoot, whatever. And then I have the b cubed comes down. b to the 4th and b cubed. So now... What I'm going to do is the quotient rule here, and that's a to the top minus the bottom, so 6 minus 2 is a 4, boom. 2 cubed is 8, so 8 times 5 is um, 4, 8 times 5 is 40, and then b to the 4th times b cubed is b to the 7th. C, piece of cake. All right, let's try a couple more. All right, I got a negative 12 over 2. That reduces to negative 6. I got 2. Oh, wow, look at all this stuff that has to move. All right, I'll move this one down. Move this one up. I'll move this one down. Goo. So t to the 1 comes down. t to the negative 3 goes up. It becomes t to the positive 3. x to the... Well, let's do the u's now. T's, u's. All right, the u to the 5 stays there. The u to the 1 stays down here. 
x to the negative fourth goes down. So that's x to the positive fourth on the bottom now, and x to the positive fifth on the bottom now. Okay, now I do my product or my quotient rule. Boom, negative six on top. T cubed over one, that's three minus one is T squared. U to the five over U to the one is U to the five minus one is four. And then the product rule, x to the fourth over x to the, or times x to the fifth, x to the ninth. That's four plus five is nine. Boom. Okay, now this is an instance where I think it is easier to simplify the inside before I deal with this crazy thing. Because this is going to make everything negative and I'm going to distribute it to everything and multiply and then I've got to switch them all and it just becomes a big mess. So rather than do that, I think it's easier to just deal with the parentheses first. Alright, so I'm going to kind of ignore this outside guy here. So I'm just going to rewrite it so I don't forget that it's really there happening. Alright, let's look at the inside here. 2 over 3, nothing doing. Here I have x cubed over x to the 4th, so that's x to the 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And then y squared over y to the 1th y to the 2 minus 1 on top, and that's y to the 1. Oh yeah, when you do the quotient rule, it's always top minus bottom, and it ends up on top. That's why I got that right there. Let me get this out of the way. It's a little bit too cluttered. All right, now, uh, z to the 1th over z to the negative 2. So I can just use my quotient rule and say that's z to the 1 minus minus 2. So z to the 1 minus minus 2 is going to be a plus 2, so that's z to the 3rd. I could have moved this up and then used my product rule too, but it was kind of a little more efficient doing what I did. Now I still got to deal with this little guy. So I distribute that to everything. Boom, 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 boom. That gives me 2 to the negative 2, 3 to the negative 2, x to the negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, two negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, negative. So I have this. Hopefully you've been pausing this anytime I said something confusing and rewatching those pieces. So it's going a little fast in the end there. Um, so now this one moves, this one moves, that one, that one. So that gives us x squares stays right where it is on the top there. 2 squared goes to the bottom. But I'm not going to write 2 squared because I'm clever enough to know that 2 squared is 4. And I get 3 cubed on the top, or 3 squared. But again, I'm clever enough to know that 3 squared is 9. And then y squared on the bottom. And then z to the 6th on the bottom. Sweet. I have no negative exponents left in that one, so I am Dunsky. Here are a few u tries for you. None so crazy as what I've done necessarily in these last couple slides. But in your practice, you're going to get some doozies.